Ray, after the kind of life that you lived, after all the terrible things that you have done, I know that you're sorry, regardless of what your mother did or, or any other thing. I know that you're sorry That's for true. the grief that you brought to them and, and the life that you lived. And I know that you're thankful Very to much. Christ that he died and made it possible that you can have a new life. I know that you are. That is correct. You've been a good Christian all these years. You've been a blessing to the church, really a blessing. And we're just so glad that you're a part of the Tony and Susan Alamo Christian Foundation. And it's people like you that Jesus died for. You know, so many people forget the true essence of the gospel, that the first man who was saved through the blood of Jesus Christ was a thief that was hanging on the cross beside him. But he knew he was his Lord, even though he was dying beside him. And he called him Lord and asked for mercy. And Jesus heard that even in the, the throes of death and the suffering that Christ himself was going through. But that soul was the most important thing in this world to him. And he said, this day you will be with me in paradise. That's the Savior that extended his hand to you that night and said, Ray, come home. No, Amen. No. I'm home now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Steve, tell us how you come to be at the foundation. Well, so I spent the early years of my life on, in an area very similar to Alma, Arkansas, in upstate New York. I was raised on a dairy farm that my ancestors had received this a veterans grant from the government for fighting in the Revolutionary War. And they cleared the land, they built homes and churches. And this was the same farm in the same community I grew up in. And uh, my parents, they weren't too dedicated to the farm or to God or much else, but my grandparents knew God. And I remember sitting around the breakfast table as a child, listening to my grandfather read out of that old King James Version of the Bible. And, and they made me to know that there was something required of every man by God. And I was shielded from the things that were starting to happen in this country for the next few years, and I was pretty much in subjection to the farm and hard work. Uh, when I was 17, my parents sold the farm, and I finished high school, and within a very short time, I, after being cooped up on the farm, more or less, I figured this is a time to live, and I'm going to make up for all those years of hard work, and I'm going to have a good time. So I didn't know which direction to go, so I went every direction at once. I, uh, became a surf bum on the coast. I went to Rockies and became a ski bum. I became a hippie, a college student. I would, a gambler, uh, everything that I'd ever wanted to do. And uh, in a very few years of doing this, m my life was a mess. I was uh, 20 years old and I was on the streets of Hollywood Boulevard after touring back and forth across the country, living in communes and sleeping beside the road. I had taken just about every type of drug that you can imagine. And I was pretty much at the end of the line. I didn't, I was close to the point of no return. But still, in the back of my mind, that was always haunted me, always. I never forgot the, those early morning breakfasts, and I knew that I hoped I didn't go too far before I had a chance in my life to do something for God. And, and I got that chance in the most unlikely place on earth that I thought of. I was going down Hollywood Boulevard, my hair flying in the wind, a pack on my back, and just having a good time. And my main objective that day was to get out of Hollywood as fast as I could. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. And I certainly didn't expect to be confronted with the gospel, but I not only was confronted with the gospel, but it was the first time in my life I ever heard it preached in the power of the Holy Ghost. And the brother told me, he said, it doesn't matter what you've done, the brother from the foundation, because I had been in streets and churches all over, and I never heard the gospel, but when I heard it by somebody from the foundation, then it cut like a sword into my heart. And when I heard what he said, he said, uh, it doesn't matter what you've done with your life or what you plan on doing with your life. One of these days, real soon, only what you've done for the Lord Jesus Christ is going to count, because he's coming back to earth again. And I couldn't run from that. I couldn't go around it. It stopped me dead in my tracks. It was a supernatural experience. I knew that 
I had to do something for God, that everything around me that I'd done or wanted to do was so vain that only a few little time left I was going to do something for God. And you couldn't have stopped me from getting to those services that night. Armies couldn't have stopped me. I got on that bus and I went up to those services in Saugus. And at the altar call, I got down on my knees and asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart, and he washed every sin that I'd ever committed away. He made me a new creature, and I knew it. And for the first time in my life, I had a direction, and I knew that I was going to do something for God for the time remaining. And he gave me a place, the Tony and Susan Lamo Christian Foundation, to cert where I could learn the Word of God and be a, an effective soul winner and really do a job for God. And I'll tell you, I've been at the foundation now for... 10 years, one third of my life. And my only regret is that it wasn't my whole life. Isn't and, that wonderful? Yes, ma'am. So wonderful, Steve. And your grandfather and grandmother, they broke away from their church years ago and they went out into evangelism, didn't they? Yes, ma'am, they did. My grandfather told me once, he says, uh, he was part of the old Methodist church, Shouting Methodist, he called them. He says, but when they joined these big organizations, he says, it was time for me to leave. And he he just so got out. completely understood our church because they really suffered some persecution too when they went they right out into evangelism, into soul winning. I know your grandfather was, he said, well, this church is just like the one we had. He said, there's nothing strange about this. He said, I, I recognize it completely. It's just wonderful. It's just wonderful what's happening here. And they, they come down about every year now, don't they? Well, they'd they like to live here. I think. They'd like to live here, yeah, so they could be right in the church. Well. I know it's real, Amen. and I know that a person that was out there and, and involved in everything you was involved in, believe me, you're not here by any imaginary force. It had Amen. to be something that was powerful, something that was real, and something that would survive uh, the, the knocks and, and the abuse and the torture and torment you've had to go through. Uh, in order to go ahead and be a soul winner and carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, you had to find something that was supernatural. I sure did. And that something was Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Don Wolf, tell us how you come to be at the foundation. Well, Susie, uh, my testimony is quite a bit like Steve's. I grew up in a... Now, you told me before we went on, you said, don't tell them I was raised on a farm. I said, I'm not going to tell them anything. Well, I'm, I'm just going to tell them a Midwestern <laughs> farm community. <laughs> I was going to leave that part out. <laughs> but praise the Lord, I, I did grow up on a farm, and my testimony was a lot, a lot like Steve's. And uh, I, I knew how to do a lot of hard work, and uh, uh, being on a farm was the last, last thing I wanted to do. Uh, I was just so, the kind of kid that wished he was somewhere else. And uh, all my life I went to church. Large... It wasn't only you, Don. It was the mass media, television, everything was showing out there how wonderful it was you out bet. there and all the things that you could enjoy. Just leave home and just get out there and get the middle of it. And here I was out on a, on a tractor. Yeah. <laughs> And then the you'd see the all these things, read all the publications <laughs> and everything that was so exciting out there. But it wasn't so exciting when you got out into it, was it? Well, it sure wasn't. Um, uh, my uh, mother always taught in the school system, and uh, my family was into education. It was all I was college orientated uh, all my life. I uh, was expected to. Uh, uh, be a college graduate and go on and either go back into farming or some major uh, occupation, but that's not where my heart was at. And I grew up in a large denominational church, and uh, I can just remember Sunday after Sunday going there, walking in the door, getting your bulletin, and with the, the whole service mapped out right there, you know. Sing so many songs, brother so-and-so has to open with a prayer, or he's, he well, gives the prayers, a lot of money, he well, won't come back anymore. The, well, the prayers were written right out there on the... Uh, where you could help. Uh, uh, where you could say them yourself, you know. <laughs> and, you know, Susie, that's, that's a th one of the things that's been such a testimony to me all these years. Every time we enter a gospel service, there's nothing ever there. There's, there's complete order in our church, but it's the Spirit of God leading every one of those services. And I just thank and praise God that we, that I have pastors like you and Tony who are led by the Spirit of God, that when you get up behind a pulpit, 
I even forgot. I even forget to take the collection. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 and when you get up behind a pulpit like that, it's the spirit of God, and what that that God is leading you and guiding you, and you're teaching the congregation. Uh, the things that God wants them to know, not something that's just mapped out there on a bulletin. The suggested sermon for Sunday morning right. and the suggested sermon for Sunday night. Let God suggest it for a while. But you feed our hearts with what God wants us to know. And praise God, I mean, it's, 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 it's the most wonderful thing in this world, you know, and I just, so many people don't even have any idea of what a spirit-filled service is like and what it really is, what it really feels like to feel the Spirit of God and to feel the Holy Spirit coming down and just moving upon people's hearts. I just really praise and thank God that, that we have a church like that that is led by How the Spirit. How old are you, Don? I'm 30 years old. How long have you been here? 11 years. 11 years. Well, how, how, you, you men, how do you feel? Now, here you are, Ray, obviously an absolute criminal, you know, <laughs> and uh, the, the, the other two of you, uh, you know, involved in a little bit of everything, you know, yes, when you broke away from home, you just went out and, and did it up royally. Now, how do you feel after all these years, the age that all of you are now, how are you, Ray? 30, be 31 you, Steve? this month. 30 also. Now, how do you feel after living the kind of lives you did to be referred to as brainwashed children? I think uh, everybody out there is brainwashed. They've had the media pumping all this garbage into them for all these well, years. Well, praise the Lord. And, uh, I'm glad I've, you said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've been t being taught evolution and all these different things on TV and everything like that. And everything is geared against God. Yes, it is. And I just praise and thank God that, that we were shown the truth. You know, you know something, Susie, something's really uh, supernatural is that when I did, I finally broke away from that small farm community got to Hollywood Boulevard with expectations of having the time of my life. I no sooner stepped out of a car. Here I was ready to get into drugs, narcotics, anything I could possibly get into. I no sooner stepped out of the car than I was handed a gospel tract from a person at the foundation. And I came to that service that night and I really met my burning bush and met Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and there's just no telling what I would have, been got, would have got into. That's right. That's right. The Lord's been good to you, hasn't he? Amen. Just so merciful. I'm just so sorry that we haven't got more time. I'm going to have Don back again, and I'm going to have Oscar Lermer back again also. Uh, these testimonies are just so, so dynamic, so true. You know, I know it's hard for some of you out there to be able to visualize the kind of lives that some of these people have lived, but they did. And there are thousands and thousands of others out there just like Ray, all over the place. This man obviously would have been a killer. There's no telling to what degree that uh, of uh, violence his life would have gone into. And we, we've fought a good fight at the foundation. We've preached a good gospel, and we've fought a good fight. And we're going to finish the fight, not the race, the fight. We're going to be right there to the very last. And we're going to be reaching out to people like Ray. I see that my time is gone until this same time. The Lord bless you and goodbye.